there. This is Arlene Stridler Brown, still chatting with you from my home office in Boulder, Colorado, on a beautiful spring day. We're probably experiencing some of what you're experiencing in Texas. The topic for today is uh, routines based learning through tele intervention. I'm going to um, give you lots of tips on conducting a session in the home when you're not there uh, by capitalizing on what families have and do in their homes. But first, a little tip. Our second tip about tele-intervention. This is a quote from a webinar that I gave uh, in 2019 for the American Speech Language Hearing Association. I think I shared a different one with you on the last topic that we discussed. So here goes, telepractice increases the possibility for the provider to make arrangements to be present during the actual routines or activities that the family and child are having difficulty with, such as shopping, dining out, taking a bath, going to bed, playing at the park, etc. Uh, end of quote. That's kind of the topic of today, not just when they're problem situations, but we're going to talk about capitalizing on a situation that exists in the child's life at home. So I'm going to look at the when, where, and whys of a tele-intervention visit. Start with when. When do we conduct the session? We have four options. And this comes from the Sky High program out of Utah State University. You can conduct a session during a parent routine, a child routine, parent initiated play, or child initiated play. Let's go into each one of them. When you're working in the home, any activity a parent is doing can be a language activity or a sign language activity, or a speech activity, or a, an opportunity for developing cognitive skills, or a speech activity, whatever is in the child's IFSP. So what are some parent routines? I've done sessions while parents are vacuuming. You have to stop the vacuum a lot for kids with hearing loss so they can hear the language. While a parent is dusting, Cooking, the kitchen, such a wonderful, enriching environment to work in. In days to come, I've done sessions out in the real world, marketing. I'll meet a family at the supermarket and we'll conduct our session while the parents going up and down the aisles. We can work in the laundry room. These are all parent routines where parents spend time and I can just picture little ones being right there near the parent while they are spending time on that activity. Or a child routine. Every day a child's eating. Every day, pretty much, a child's getting dressed. For the little ones, you're changing diapers many times a day. Bathing, there's an issue with amplification if the child is using hearing aids or cochlear implants, of course getting in and out of the car. These are routines of the child in which we can engage and conduct a lesson. Fourth, a third rather, parent initiated activities. Basically playing with props that the parent chooses. The parent says, how about this puzzle? Or how about these stacking cups? It's uh, the parent has initiated play with some object. And of course a favorite is playing with props that are chosen by the child. So the child, my granddaughter this morning said, come, come, cups. She's not quite two. And was beckoning me into the room where the cups were sitting on the table where she wanted to uh, play with stacking them. Now, in traditional home visits, this is a question for you. In traditional home visits, in-person home visits, the most common routine that I've observed 
is when a early interventionist is playing with the child, parents engaged, and it's with a toy. I see far fewer sessions in a bedroom or the kitchen or the laundry room. Has it ever happened to you when you've come to a home visit and the parent says, oh, while you're here, I'm just gonna spend a few minutes going to the laundry room so I can put the laundry in the washer? And I say, no problem. How about if we come with you? So the child and the parent and I all go to the laundry room and we can make a language activity around doing laundry or folding laundry or moving the laundry from the washer to the dryer. You get my point, right? Now, where do we conduct this session? Which I've kind of given you a bit of a heads up about. In the kitchen, in the bedroom, in the laundry room, outside, in the backyard, walking down the street. Even getting in and out of a car is such an enriching language experience. Opening the door, getting into the car seat, buckling, unbuckling, doing straps, um, closing the door, putting down the window, talking to the child through the window. Uh, all these things that happen daily so a parent doesn't need to get into a mindset of, I need to use that strategy. Let me get the toy that we played with so I can do that strategy. Rather, we can integrate all the strategies we want to work on into the family's routine. Now, what do you bring to a session? I think if I asked 20 early interventionists what they brought to a session, I'd probably get a very nice variety of answers. Uh, for many years, I was the director of the Colorado Home Intervention Program, known as CHIP. And sometimes as a director, I make comments about what can or can't be done. I was very proud to tell all of the early interventionists, all 135 of them at the time, that they really were not to bring any toys to a session. And I got some thumbs up to that and some thumbs down to that and some people were not sure. I think that if you don't bring toys, and you go and embrace the idea of using the routines of the family, then it's more likely that the parent will learn to utilize strategies all day long during lots of routines with the child. Robin McWilliams is well, a well-known person. I have attached an article of his uh, for you to read. Uh, he calls um, his work uh, routines-based early intervention. He has a very prescriptive way of engaging a family to ask them what their routines are so that you can, as the early interventionist, plan your activities to embrace and utilize those routines. So here's some homework for you before your next session. And that is, think about your family. If you've been seeing them, you know a little bit about them, think about the routines and the activities that that family does in a typical day. Again, this is straight from Robin with Nick William. Corroborate this with the family when you visit them the next time. Ask them about, let's take an easy one. Eating is part of a child's routine, no matter what age they are. Then say, how many times during the day does this happen? With my granddaughter who's living with us during these times, um, her parents have arranged, have her routine has evolved to be breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. So five times during the day, at a minimum, this little one, who's not quite two, is standing in the kitchen while her mother or father, or me, are 
putting together the food that will become part of her routine. Then there's the time spent while she's eating or your, inner, your client is eating so that you can employ the strategies associated with eating. Um, so think about that. And when we chat uh, among one another, I'll look forward to hearing what your success has been uh, with some of these strategies. Remember, I will repeat the quote, telepractice increases the possibility for the interventionist to make arrangements to be present during the actual routines and activities that the family and the child are doing. Till next time, do good work, stay well.